So this is the power of stress and how when we start letting our stress, even from one area of our life, impact us, it can shift our whole relationship and our whole life. See if this cycles all this difficult to imagine. See if you can imagine this for a minute. So a woman stressed out because she and her husband just bought a dream home, right? And had an adjustable rate mortgage. And, you know, the economy is kind of falling and the mortgage rates changing and the financial pressure is building. And she starts feeling the pressure of finances and feels the pressure that her husband's feeling. And now he starts working more to make sure they can cover the mortgage and working more weekends. And they're trying to get a bigger salary and they're seeing less of each other and they're feeling more disconnected. And now sex is happening less and less often. And it's definitely not like it used to be. So now she starts feeling lonely. She starts getting depressed. Things aren't changing. So now she's telling her doctor like, oh, I'm feeling depressed. Now she gets Paxil. So now Paxil takes the edge off the depression, but Paxil will also affect the hormone balance. And now there's a decreased libido on her end. And Paxil can also have a side effect of anorgasmia or an inability to orgasm. So now the episodes where there is romance, it's disappointing for her. It's disappointing for him. So now it's like, why bother trying? Which leads to further stress in the marriage, which leads to more arguments, which makes him wonder about his testosterone levels. But it also wonders like, should I even stay in this relationship anymore? Maybe I don't love that other person anymore. And this kind of cycle can go on and on and on. Have you ever seen or been in something like that? So this is the power of stress and how when we start letting our stress, even from one area of our life impact us, it can shift our whole relationship and our whole life. Because we have basically a whole pharmacy in our body that play a major role in our ability to lead satisfying sex lives. They determine cycles and stages. Um, so for example, endorphins, right? Our feel good hormones. These are like morphine to our body. They reduce pain. They're released during sex. They're released during exercise right? You hear about runners getting their endorphin high. Um, dopamine. Dopamine. Dopamine's kind of that like more addictive kind of, it can, it can lead to more addictive kind of, but if you have too little, you can be unable to fall in love with another person or you can lack a sex drive. But when dopamine's at a, at a balanced level for an individual, the libido is more healthy. They feel loving towards each other right? It's kind of a craving neurotransmitter. It's responsible to like this. I want it now. So the strongest dopamine rush happens during orgasm, right? And dopamine is really severely affected by stress. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter that most people think about when they think about depression, but this transmitter helps us feel content. So Prozac is one of the prescriptions that they'll prescribe um, that helps us bring more serotonin and, and helps with reuptake. High levels of serotonin actually also come down the sex drive. High levels can cause impotency. They can cause sexual dysfunction. Um, in fact, some doctors will prescribe it for premature ejaculation because it delays orgasms. I hope you found this brief summary enlightening. Subscribe for more and I will see you next time. If you're interested in hearing more about how hormones and stress impact your sex drive, sign up and follow the Path to Passion class and I look forward to seeing you on the next side.